Buff Gaming here with a satisfactory tutorial showing how to use conveyor splitters and mergers, as well as some designs for evenly dividing the contents of two conveyors into two, three, four, or five outgoing belts. First off, the basic function of a conveyor splitter is to take one incoming belt of items and divide it into two or three outgoing belts. You use the same structure for splitting into two or three belts, just attach the number of outgoing belts you want and the splitter will do the rest. Opposite of a splitter is a conveyor merger. The conveyor merger allows up to three incoming belts and combines them into a single outgoing belt. Splitters are very useful when you want to share a limited resource with several locations. For instance, you'll likely find that your mining and smelting operations are more effective if you split your miner's ore into two belts so that you can feed two smelters per ore deposit. Mergers help consolidate an abundance of belts for when you have a single job that demands a large amount of a single resource, such as when you automate the assembly of rotors and need to pump a ton of screws into the assembler. Satisfactory makes splitting and merging to or from one belt pretty straightforward. However, if you've played other factory games heavily, you likely know that you are quite often faced with strange combinations such as two incoming belts that you want to split evenly amongst five outgoing belts as an example. That's your bottom line up front for splitters and mergers, but stick around if you'd like a discussion of how to tackle larger numbers of belts, as well as see some designs I've constructed for evenly splitting two belts into anywhere from two to six outgoing belts without any throughput choke points. Thanks for sticking around. Now let's take a look at some two belt splitter configurations and see how we can divide these evenly and without slowing down the flow at all. First off, I have these two containers which are both feeding into a belt that go to this merger. This merges them and then goes straight into this splitter which splits them back out. What we've created is a way to split two belts into two belts. And you might think, why would you split two belts into two belts? Well, sometimes you don't want one belt to get hung up in the back while the other one's flowing freely, so you want to share the resources of both belts with both outgoing belts. There is a problem with this design though. If you're trying to use two belts, you very likely want to have a high throughput. And while these two belts coming out can carry a full belt worth of items, this belt between these two right here can only carry one, not two belts worth of items. So you're reducing the throughput when you use a design like this. Instead, what you need to do is make sure that half of this belt goes to each outgoing belt and half of that belt goes to each outgoing belt without ever reducing all of them to a single belt. I've done this over here. However, I've done it in a rather large fashion so that we can see exactly what's going on. We have one belt coming out of here, which is split. And you see there's nothing between these two splitters here. Half of the belt goes straight forward into a merger and the other half of the belt comes over here into another merger on the right. We do the same thing over here except going to the other side and what we end up having are two outgoing belts that are never hindered on their path here. This makes sure that you can get half of the items from each container on each of these two belts and never actually slow down the items that you're feeding through. Of course, you can make this design more compact so it doesn't take so much space, and I've done an example of that in one of the later designs we'll be looking at. Now let's take a look at how to split two belts into three outgoing belts Again, splitting it perfectly evenly so that one third of this container goes to each of these and one third of this container goes to each of these without ever having these two belts restricted in the amount of items they can push through. First, we're coming to a splitter and using all three exit ports of the splitter. One third coming to this merger, one third to that merger, and one third to the merger down here. We're doing the same with this splitter over here so we end up with a third from each container and a third of the overall output in each of these out here. Now let's take a look at a perfectly balanced and unhindered two to four splitter. I know what you might be thinking, especially if you haven't played a lot of Factorio, and that's why don't you just split 
this one into two and that one into two and let them go on their way. Again, sometimes you have a need to make sure that these two containers each evenly distribute to all four of them. Otherwise, you might end up with one belt being backlogged and another one flowing freely, which can cause hangups in your factory earlier in the process. What we've done here is split the outgoing belt first into two more splitters so that we can take everything in this container and split it into fourths. Once it's split into fourths, we take one fourth to each of the mergers we have out there. And we do the same on this side as well so that each of these ends up with a quarter from each of these. It's when you get to a size like this that I highly recommend compacting it. However, in order for you to see how it's working exactly, I'm keeping it spaced out like this. Now let's take a look at a very large splitter. Here we're splitting from two to five outputs. Now, because our splitters can handle two or three, it's not very easy to split into fifths. You might think you could split one of these splitters into two and another one into three, but then you'll end up with half of it coming over here and then having a quarter on each of those two belts and then half of it coming over here and having a third go into each of those belts and you'll end up without an even distribution in the five outgoing mergers. So instead, what we do is we split it into half both ways here and then these mergers are splitting them each into three. So what we actually have are one sixth on each of the outgoing belts. Since we only have five outputs, we send five of the sixth out to the outputs and the extra sixth we're bringing back into a merger which feeds into the original loop. We do this on both sides and then have all of them feed one each into the mergers and we end up with a perfectly balanced distribution on the outgoing side. I suspect right now a lot of you are thinking this thing is way too big to be practical. And you are right. This thing has a nine by five or six foundation footprint, which total area is about the same as your space elevator. You don't want to do that for just two to five belts. Well, you can compact this. As Ada said, you need to think vertically. This is something we couldn't really do very effectively in Factorio think vertically that is. So I've taken this exact design and I've stacked it vertically in that box over there. Let's go take a look. Here is the more compact design. We're only taking a 5 by 3 footprint while still large is a third or less of the size of this design over here with the same function and essentially the same layout. You see we have two inputs here, a top and a bottom. And then we come over on this side, we'll have five outputs, which you see all feed down into these containers. Let's take a look at what it looks like inside. And I've left this wall open so that we can look in. We have one incoming container up top and another down bottom. And as you can see, it's the same design. The container feeds into an initial splitter which gives it to two more splitters, splitting it into sixths. A sixth goes to each of the five outgoing mergers, and then we have the final sixth coming back to this merger and feeding back into the original container. It's the same on the upper floor. Of course, what good would any of this be if we didn't see a demonstration? So let me come over here and take a look and see what we have in the container. 100 iron plates, perfect. Also, let's make sure these containers over here are empty. They are. Well, let's feed it into the system and see how evenly they distribute. Here we see the plates going through and the process begins.
Now that we've given it some time to finish, let's take a look in the containers. And we see they each have 100 plates in them, a fifth of what we sent through. I did say earlier that I would cover a 2 to 6 splitter, but I think you already know how to make it after seeing the 2 to 5. It's a very simple change. All we need is an extra merger block anywhere out here. And then since we're already splitting these belts into sixths, rather than feed this belt back into the loop, we'll just send this belt to our sixth merger wherever we place it and send this one out there as well, giving us six perfectly balanced mergers going out. You can apply these same methods to splitting three belts or even four or five, depending on how many you have, and you can split them into a greater or smaller number. Just keep in mind, whenever you have your initial belt that is feeding through, think about what is the fraction of the total load that each belt coming out is carrying, and how can you reduce that or increase that to the number of outgoing belts you have while sharing evenly with all of the other incoming belts. I have a rather long series of several episodes covering Factorio and how to split and balance belts for that game. And this is very similar, just that the splitters in Factorio are all 1 to 2 splitters, and the ones here can be either 1 to 2 or 1 to 3, giving you more latitude in how you make your designs. Another nice bonus of Satisfactory is that you can vertically build on multiple levels, whereas in Factorio all you have are ground belts and underground belts. Thanks for watching Bottom Line Up Front, and I hope this was helpful. If it was, feel free to like or comment and let me know, and subscribe if you'd like to see my future videos. Of course, you can dislike as well, but if you do that, I'm going to call up Coffee Stain and tell them to delay the release of Satisfactory from March 19th until March 20th. That's all for now, engineers. I'll see you next time, and... Don't forget to be effective.